there's only one team that speaks fluent gate, and that's Real Madrid. We've seen this story play many times. Do you know how you beat Real Madrid? You put the ball in the nets once, twice, three times, and for good measure, four and five times. If you don't put them away, they will punish you. Real Madrid are not here to play fancy football. They're not here to play entertaining football and here just to make you feel good. They are here to win. They invented the language of GID. For people who don't know, GID means get it done. They, they invented the language of get it done. GID, by any means necessary. Look good, don't look good, ugly, cool, whatsoever, sideways, vertical, horizontal. It's about getting the W. And that is what big clubs do. Now, of course, do you want them to play well? Of course, every team wants to play well and win. That is the utopia. That is what we aim to do. But at the end of the day, what would you rather have? A team play beautiful football and lose? Or a team play effective football that isn't pretty to look at, but they win and they win UCLs and they win trophies? I think most fans want the latter. Stuttgart played, they, they played really well. Shout out to Stuttgart. They played really well. But the thing with Stuttgart, though, is I always knew that yeah, they wasted so many good opportunities in that first half. I knew that, okay, if you're not going to be clinical, you're going to get punished. And all Stuttgart were missing was just being clinical. This is what I always say. The coach from Stuttgart, he did everything in his power. He did his job. The manager's job is I'm going to put you in a position to score. If you don't score, that's on you. So for Stuttgart, it was on them that they, they didn't score. They managed did everything. He created a situation and a strategy for you to execute, and you failed to execute. The Mbappe thing, here's the thing. <laughs> As the stakeholder and president of Mbappe FC, Mbappe, you've got to improve your football. I don't know what has happened to you. I keep saying this. People don't want to listen to me. The player we saw in Monaco is not the player that we're seeing now. I feel that Mbappe, he may have gotten sharp as a finisher and more clinical as a finisher, but in terms of his overall footballing fundamentals, I think he has actually deteriorated and declined from the guy we saw in Monaco and the guy we saw at the 2018 World Cup. But Mbappe, all because you play striker doesn't mean you have to have bad control. Doesn't mean you can't make a simple pass. Doesn't mean that you can't link play with a Jude, a Vini, and a Rodrigo. Because arguably, the best attacker in that first half was Rodrigo. He was the best attacker in that first half. Like, Rodrigo was adopting and dropping guys. So if Rodrigo is able to do that, not in his strongest position, out wide, because at the end of the day, striker, left, right, cool. You have to adapt. At the end of the day, you can still control the ball. Whether you play in Gripton, Moon, Timbuktu, you can still control the ball on Mbappe. So for Mbappe, it's hard for me to um, have any sympathy when you're not even doing the basics. Do the basics first, then we can talk about, well, you know, he's trying his best. So if you move, move him out to wide, he got his goal. Cool, he got his goal, got at the end of it. But overall, it still feels as if Mbappe just still feels a bit rusty. And Stuttgart, they knew. Double team him, triple team him, make it hand for him, and it was hand for Mbappe to really get into his 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 spots. Um, look, I think for Real Madrid, they definitely need Kamavinga back, one hundred hundred percent. You know, they suffered in that first half because obviously Milos didn't play the, the the first half, and I do believe that Modric he's getting old. There's only so much running he can do, and now you're beginning to see how they're missing Tony Cruz because in a game like this. When you're facing a team who can keep the ball and can move the ball around and are like very well coached, you need that composed figure in midfield, which is what Tony Cruz provided, which is what a peak Modric provided, not the geriatric that we have now, with all due respect. So that is where your Ancelotti is hoping that Kamavinga comes in and he is that calm head who can be like, you know, guys, give me the ball, boom, I can be a sponge keep possession, and relieve the pressure from us having to chase the ball around. Because remember, you conserve energy if you keep the ball. But if you're chasing the ball for the other team, that is how you actually expend energy. So that's not what you really want to do. So, look, that's my thing there is, uh, you know, it's... <sighs> okay, and and, th and this, is, this is where I, I, I tie everything in. There's a formation that works here. But Carlo needs to make that harsh call. 
Hendrik is ready to start. But Carlo just doesn't want to start him. <laughs> Hendrik is ready to start because how many times does this guy need to come off the bench with hardly any few minutes and either score or look extremely sharp and threatening in front of goal? What he has done in the little minutes he has is arguably more than what Mbappe has done. Because correct me if I'm wrong, so Mbappe has only scored one goal from um, open play, or is it two goals from open play? But the thing, though, is you can just see that. You, see, you have to respect positions. You put Hendrik as a striker. He just has the striker's instinct. He knows the runs to make. He knows how to get in those pockets. For Mbappe, it just does not come naturally to him to play as a striker. I've been saying this many times. Carlo Ancelotti, this kid is ready. This kid is ready. There are some young players that need to be eased in. There are some young players where it's, it needs them and they can't rush them. He's ready now. And what we're seeing from many of these young players, we were seeing it from Yamal. We saw it from Jude, Gule, and now Hendrik. These young players are our best footballers. Forget those 25 to 30 guys. They failed in terms of being footballers. The ballers of this generation, the real footballers, are these young dudes. And they are ready now. These guys are ready to ball now. Because Fabricas even mentioned it where he said that, no, 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 no. These dudes, these young guys, they're ready now. They're ready to ball now. And for Hendrik, you can just see he's, he's, he's hungry. It would be different if Mbappe looked good, he was playing well and Real had a striker, then yes. Is it mean going through? Is it crazy to say that I think Hendrik would perform better through the middle as a striker than Mbappe? I don't think it's crazy to say. And I want to then remove Mbappe from there. You have a decision to make. Do you put him on the left? What happens to Vinny? Do you put him on the right? What happens to Rodrigo? But these are the decisions a manager has to make. And Callum Chelsea, you have to make that decision. Because you got away with this. A team that was more clinical, sharper in front of goal, they beat you. If this, they were a lot sharp in front of goal, these guys beat you. So you're, so you're lucky and you got away with one that's, that's these guys um, were not clinical in front of goal and, and they just um, bombed it out. Because, bro, Stuttgart, you, you're not being serious if you're missing those amounts of, of chances, man. So look, I'll say it again. Um, this Mbappe, Vinny, Jude thing, let's see. Look, it's early days. It's still early days. And it just looks as if this will take time. It will take time. Who knows? We can come back here in three months' time and be like, whoo, wow, these guys are amazing. So once these guys figured it out, boom. Because did MSN, were they amazing from the very first game? No. They were not in sync the very first game. By the time they were in sync, they were the most unstoppable front three we've ever seen in club football. Now, I'm not saying that Mbappe, Vini, and Jude are going to be MSN. No. But what I'm saying, though, is that there is something here. When these guys are on the counter, there's speed, there's technique, and there's football. So these guys can be dangerous on the counter. But I just don't, I don't know. See, for me, I'm not Carlo. <laughs> so Carlo, you're, the, the decision is, do you persist with Mbappe, Rodrigo, Vini, Jude, knowing that they will get it right? Or do you make a very tough call, sacrifice one of these players, and you put Hendrik in there? Because I'm staying right now, Hendrik is ready. And Hendrik may just be the piece that's missing. You see, the assumption is, oh, no, he's too young. He's not ready. But maybe, no, he is the piece that actually fits in. So you figure out all the other guys on the left, on the right, and the number 10. But the guy through the middle, the striker, the goal scorer, might just be Hendrik, more so than any of these other players. We have to just wait and seek, man. Um, guys, scan that QR code to join the Discord for all that footballing, the Discorders, man. And I'll see you guys for more of that UCL reaction, football stuff, hangout. You know what it is. Peace out. Stay true. Is what it is. One love.